Hello, my name is Eggsbyte, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make moving blocks. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, these are not actually blocks. They are entities. It's a multi-layered thing of um, falling blocks, shulkers, and armor stands. The falling block gives it its uh, look, which um, I haven't gotten rid of the timer yet so that they all just decayed so we can actually see what's going on. So all the fl falling blocks have uh, decayed and dropped as items down here. So now we can see what's going on underneath. And that is uh, shulkers and armor stands. If we go into um, spectator mode like that. So we can see the armor stands. Now the armor stands are important in order to allow for motion because shulkers like to stick to a grid pattern. So in order to uh, keep, get, keep that from happening, we mount them on armor stands. That way, if we teleport the armor stands, we can get the shulkers to move smoothly, which is not something that they naturally do. We can keep the falling blocks from decaying with this command over here, which just runs as all falling blocks and sets the time value to one. And that keeps it from counting up and will keep these falling blocks from decaying over time. So now this structure is uh, basically permanent. It's not going to go anywhere unless we uh, tell it to. And as we can see, because we're using shulkers, it has full collision and everything. Like We can do parkour and all that stuff, even though it's actually moving. Or it's not moving, even though it's actually an entity. And if we move it, we can still try to do some parkour on it while it's moving. So that's pretty cool. And how I summon in all of these entities is with a command like this. I, um, see, where is it? Yes. So I run the function, and then it, I'm basically just running a function file, which then summons in all of these entities at their locations with their respective materials. But creating that file is something that would normally be a rather difficult task. And that's why I've created a script to speed up the process. So in order to make one of those models that you can just load in, you will first need to grab a, a, a structure block like this and create a structure with it. So in order to make the structure, first I'm just going to make a few modifications to this. Let's grab a yeah, red uh, chiseled stone or something like that. Uh, add that in a few places there. Now at the structure block, I already have that area selected. So I'm just going to do wall, and that should be good. So now I've saved it as a file in my .minecraft directory. And in order to get to this file, we go to the .minecraft folder, go to saves, the, the world that you saved it with, generated Minecraft and structures. I'll have this whole thing in the description. But now we have wall.mbt. And that's what we saved it as. So I'm going to drag this over into the same folder that my uh, Python script is in. So now uh, we let's open up the Python script with um, idle. It's it, idle usually comes with Python. I'm not going to explain how to install Python, but because um, there, there's lots of other videos on how to do that. But assuming you have Python and all that set up, you open it up in idle. Then we can see everything here. And right here um, is, let's see, there. That is the file that we are going to read. So we'll change that out with .mbt. Um, let's change the name of what we're going to export it as. And now let's run this. And wait a second. There we go. So now that's done and we have wall.mc function. So we can copy that, uh, go back over up to here, go into data packs, and you'll, you'll need to have a data pack for this, just drop it into um, any basic, really any, um, any valid data pack, just put it in there and that should work. So now we go back into Minecraft and um, uh, reload like that and then go to wall which is our new thing summon it in and there is our wall 
in entities. And if we run way over here, turn this on, we can see it moving, just like the other one over there. One other note, this Python script does have one dependency, and that is nbtlib. So uh, after you install Python, you'll want to go to your command prompt and run pip install nbtlib, like that. Wait, no space. And then that will install nbtlib. You see, I already have it installed, so it's not doing anything. And then after that, then you should be all ready to run this Python script. I find this to be a very useful script, as normally creating functions that summon in structures would be a very difficult and tedious task. But with this script, it's actually quite easy. Also, all of the scripts and commands used in this video will be down into the description. Another thing to keep in mind is that this is designed for use with solid blocks and only copies what type of block is in each location. So any type of like stair rotation or slab or any of that type of stuff won't be won't be recorded. So you probably want to stick with solid blocks for this. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like. And if you want to see more, then subscribe and click the bell. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, that's weird. Huh. You, you, you can't crouch while on these blocks. You have to do it on... on the